Welcome to another collective reading. I've thrown some runes for you today. These messages are timeless, so whenever it finds you, there should be a gift from the divine, a message from the divine for you as a takeaway. And as, as is, these messages are also collective. So if it doesn't resonate, perhaps this reading is not for you. But take what does, discard the rest, apply it to your, your timeline, your life at the moment. Allowing what resonates to open you up to the divine, to divinity, for, for clarity, to align mind, body, soul. To move through life with your intuition rather than just thought. Um, yeah. So, the first two runes you have the Enlightenment rune, and it was shining at the seed harvest. And this is the, um, the rune for cycles, harvest, understanding, yeah, the cycles of humanity, potentially the cycles of the, the medicine wheel, cycles of collective consciousness, cycles of astrology, and yeah, it's like acknowledging the... The enlightenment is in the cycle. So rather than having the human linear, linear perspective of forward, backwards, oh, I've taken a back step or I'm not going as forward as much as I like, that the entire cycle gets to be acknowledged, that the process is cyclical or even the whirlwind of collective consciousness that everything is just happening now. It just depends what you're experiencing or what you choose to focus your experience on will be your experience. So this is finding the enlightenment in acknowledging the cycles, in acknowledging the harvest. Um, yeah, and acknowledging that, that seeds take a while to grow that the, the, the seeds are planted and it might be that you're not digging them up until next year, but that they're planted and enjoying watering them and enjoying the process and enjoying watching them grow from seedlings, um, enjoying the cycles, the natural cycles of nature, no matter which part of that cycle you find yourself in rather than needing any type of instant gratification or just getting the goal or thinking like you've gone back. Acknowledging the whole, the whole cycle is the, the message from the divine here that we start with. Um, I've also got Boathra in the death position. So this might mean for, for some of you, she comes up in reverse, um, that, that there's a bit of death um, and death is often transformation, things dropping away, um, things that are no longer serving, dropping away, perhaps the old, so could be winds of change, old things dropping away for new things in order to come in. It's also with this, and this is your need rune. So to acknowledge um, the beauty in in everything just as it is and having what you need. It's almost like want for nothing, gain everything. And this could be a sense of grief, fully feeling this grief of things as they die, as they change, as these cycles continue to go and that there is a death and grief process in cycles in nature, in cycles in our life. Um, things drop away, things die. And to fully feel and meet the grief of that will make this transition a lot. It, it will allow the cycle to flow. Whereas for me, if the grief isn't fully felt, um, you might be holding on to things rather than allowing them to die, gifting them back to the earth, fully honoring it in the feeling. 
in the cycle, honoring, honoring the cycle in the death and allowing whatever it is to, to go with love. And yes, um, allowing the cycle its time because there could be the close of a cycle, but you don't quite have the medicine of why that that's a good thing or why that that's a most effective thing because you, you're you not in the place of knowing what's next yet. It's the interim period between things are dying, things have died, but you don't know, you might be a little bit left in the, the space in between, that limbo place of, you don't quite have the harvest yet, so that there's no com comparison, compare and despair, of, oh, that's why that needed to die, because I couldn't see and feel what was coming next. So then there, there could also be a bit of an interim period of sort of waiting and unclarity, because the new cycle hasn't quite started or picked up the pace but there's a sense of like acknowledging, I think the peace and the stillness in the journey of whew, we're all exactly where we're meant to be. Uh, da, 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 the next part of the message you have, cricket and the forest. So I journeyed with these before, um, just so I can I can relay the message and talk about it. You got the beautiful cricket in the forest, and this was it was like a, a beautiful divine message about surrender, and it was almost like you were in the forest feeling free and open and you kind of laid back and this you know the chirping sound of those crickets and the um the sound of their legs was sort of nourishing your system and then it was like you fell back into this sea of crickets and they kind of like lifted you up in this glorified like it was like a transcendent experience <laughs> so um and the the message from the cricket is all is right in the world and they sing a song of joy especially in relationships so if you are having some relationships die or drop away and you're in the grief of that know that the the cricket is transcending you for something new especially in relationships that if you're unsure about, oh, has this been right? Or what have I done? Or, you know, if, if you're unsure about where you are, especially in the theme of relationships, this cricket is here to say, everything is right with the world. This is your transcendent experience. Um, sing a song of joy in relationships. It's all good as it is. So I would say if, um, especially because I pulled some tarot here as well, that you have... In the tarot, there, could, there, there is, um, it's almost like a, a friction energy, a child, potentially childlike energy. And this could be potentially past relationships with people that were maybe a bit emotionally immature, maybe a little bit immature. Um, yes, there's an energy of sort of frustration, indecision, a bit of disorganized, a bit of like stress and tension and kind of a little bit immaturity and, and kind of chaos and overwhelm. So if those are the relationships that have dropped away, then the cricket is here to say, please leave them in the past and trust. Trust in this cycle, trust in this process, leave those connections where they are um, in their cycle, which is the the death and dropping away and trust this cricket. Um, they also represent um, concentrating on the positive. That the positives hugely outweigh the negatives. In our human psyche, we tend to concentrate on the negative when we have past experiences or memories, it will be the negative ones that have impacted us 
that tend to stand out. And we're like, oh, why doesn't that happen to the positive? Um, the cricket is here to to have positive, um, positive memories, positive reinforcements, concentrate on the positive. The only time this would apply in uh, a slight kind of shadow sense might be a trauma bond. For some of you, some of the collectives are maybe alchemizing a trauma bond, which is about, this would then represent euphoric recall. And if you have past relationships that have died and dropped away, but you are experiencing positive recall, that perhaps there were aspects of the relationship that were juvenile and um, it was difficult to communicate with this person or they just brought stress and chaos. Um, but now that the relationship is closed for whatever reason, you ha are having euphoric recall where all you remember is the really positive things and you have to actually like check in with yourself and be like, oh gosh, no, there were so many more things that were destructive. Why am I using euphoric recall? Um, it's often in the case of a trauma bond, that there was a, a trauma attachment with this person and therefore you will only remember the good things um, and consolidate that trauma bond. So maybe some of you really needed to acknowledge and hear that and just use your discernment and check in with yourself and be like, huh, okay, let's, um, yes, the positives outweigh the negatives in life, but the only reason that is going to come into your detriment is if there's a trauma bond in place. So, you know, um, it's the same with everything. There's, there's an exception to the rule, isn't there? And there's, there's, you can take a trait and there's good things and bad things about it. It is just seeing the whole, like we said about the seed and the harvest. We want to take everything into account here. Make sure we're seeing the package as a whole. So, um, if you want to go out into the forest or next time you find yourself in the forest, in your mind's eye, call in the cricket and see if there's any extra messages for you. That would be a beautiful thing to do. The next part, I got two, two animal and archetype cards, um, is outer space with the woodpecker. And this was really beautiful. So this is, the woodpecker is like a good omen. It's like the home, home office, all that is. And this represents new rhythms that are appearing. There is like um, a completely new you just around the corner. But I would say um, the, 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 the journey here was that the woodpecker kind of flew out of my heart it's, it's a very heart-centered, heart-intelligent, heart wisdom, and kind of up to, this is this for me is then outer space is the galactic council. So if any of you resonate with working metaphysically with either Palladians, um, galactic council, star brothers, star sisters of any kind, if you work in a shamanic capacity, this was your heart's wisdom being activated by your, your light beings your ancestral, your star brothers, your star sisters. The Octurian Council, if you resonate with that, the Palladian Council, if you resonate with that, was using the woodpecker as a vessel to, to fly your heart's energy for your divine activation. And this, um, it was about stillness. So your woodpecker flew out of the heart and then it's almost like, was very much like, and just was super still. Nothing much was happening. It was very much about using stillness, using presence to, I think, receive. So it is like, maybe there are some aspects of this new vibration part of you that you can acknowledge right now in your life. Maybe not, but it's not like, it's not quite fully here and fully landed so that there won't, that, so you might know, you might be like, yes, I can totally feel this shift. I'm in it. If you're sensitive, if you're not quite as sensitive, you might not have acknowledged, acknowledged this new place fully yet because it's not even fully realized. And if you feel like, oh my God, it's not even fully realized. My life is like shifted and it's freaking incredible at the moment. And I'm in the best place ever. Guess what? It's not even done. There's even more beauty and juice and joyness to come it's like 
we're in the stillness of the shift right now and even it's going to get even more sublime is what the wood, woodpecker is saying so for those of you that do galactic work um, I would come into meditation, come into stillness, use the woodpecker to find your soul family, star brothers, star sisters, um, and see what, what galactic activation wants to come through that stillness. Mm, this is very much, yeah, shamanic activation, shamanic abilities, uh, traveling the metaphysical, intensely spiritual. Mm, yeah, clear seeing. So this is your psychic activation right here. Yeah, yeah, and new rhythms. This new rhythms is really cool. New and new psychic rhythms. So not so much paying attention to your thought, but the new rhythm of very much being aligned in the psychic of your body, um, your psychic hearing and your psychic vision and, and moving from a place of intuition and deep heart wisdom rather than thought. Okay. What other beauties did we have? Uh, you've got the, the moon reversed page of wands um, for tarot. And I kind of asked uh, tarot wise if there was any other energies kind of complicating you at the moment. And this was, yes, yeah, stay away from any frustrated spaces. Um, if you find yourself in, in overwhelm or you go into any collective energies or like places with multiple people that seem a little bit disorganized and fractured, I would take yourself back off into peace. I feel like this is what's saying, like pay pay a little bit of attention into if you're going into environments that seem a little bit ruptured i would come back out into this piece and just be held in your metaphysical bubble of um your your galactic safety net i mean if you have to be in those spaces of disorganized it's like yes consciously drop yourself into the body and hold yourself in peace don't allow it to rupture you so be super discerning about that. Um, yes. And be aware of sort of other people in your space that that don't want to don't want to change. Um, they don't want to sacrifice. Yeah, and they are behaving with a sense of like frustrated action. Um, just be, yeah, be aware if that is coming into your field and I would me personally choose not to play with it or engage um yes anyone with inflexibility will cause chaos and um, overwhelm nice uh the moon is giving you a message of truth consciousness clarity so tapping into grandmother moon Mama Quila for, yeah, bringing clarity. If you're unclear about something, tap into the moon's energy to bring clarity, consciousness, um, and also to be cautious of any deception. If you're, if you're kind of worried about, oh, is this deceiving me? Is this deception? I want to know the truth. Ask the moon. Check on the moon's energy to be discerning around that um, to get the truth, right? Because you don't want to go forward into any trifling mistakes right check in with the moon if you are unsure if you are feeling like could there be deception here make sure you check in with the moon bring in your clarity and then the page of wands puts you in a place of courage excitement enthusiasm loving life and discovery allowing your spirit to be free and that sounds very much like um it goes well with the woodpeckers uh, message of this new rhythm and this new rhythm being uh, a free spirit that's enthusiastic and yeah just is loving life with whatever happens it's um, exquisite to be in a place of loving not the mundane but yeah <laughs> it's not just loving the the, the detail in what 
so many could miss. And uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful energy, beautiful readings. And for my shamanic journey is out there, if you want to get extra messages for yourself, the invitation is to journey with the woodpecker, to fly the woodpecker into outer space and see what happens here and to journey with the cricket in the forest. So taking your awareness into space consciousness, which will be closing your eyes, coming into safety in the body, being aware of the space around you in the room, and then finding your, um, finding your memory recall, your imagination, taking you into a forest. And then once you're in the forest, you call on the cricket and just allow any metaphors or follow the cricket, whatever they do to tell you a story or give you metaphor or give you healing. Um, beautiful. I hope you enjoyed today's message. Give yourselves a gentle hug. Enjoy your day. Love from my heart's truth to yours. It'll be chai. <laughs>